Turn in your Bible, please, for a moment to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to continue just sort of where I was last Sunday. How many remember last Sunday what we talked about? Shining like the stars. Today I want to talk about being people of the light. We always come to church on Sunday and we want to know on the first Sunday of the year, what's the Lord saying to the church? I've just got a real simple message today. Turn the light on. Turn the light. Look at your neighbor tell them, turn the light on. Philippians chapter 5, verse 8, when you got it, say word. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, in the Lord. Walk as children of light, but the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is the acceptable thing to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by those in secret. But all things, somebody say all things. But all things are exposed, that are exposed are made manifest by light. For whatever makes manifest is light. And this is the text, the verse that I felt jump up off the page to me for this house for this year. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise. But understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine. Is he going to preach on alcohol? Only if you're drinking it. <laughs> be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing. This is gonna be a year of singing. Making melody in your hearts. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Thank you for your word and for helping me to preach it and for them having the grace to receive it. Help me today, God, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit down beside your neighbor and tell them on the way down, we are people of the light. Help me welcome our Athens family right now. Come on, tell Pastor Chris and Amy. Come on, tell everybody over there in Athens we love them. We talked last week about the issue of darkness. The whole idea, I hope you remember, of contrasts. Everyone say contrast. Bright things show up better in dark places. If you want to really see light glow, put it in a dark room and even one little candle in a dark room will make a loud announcement. One little candle in a dark room dispels the darkness of that room and makes an announcement that as dark as the darkness is, all it takes is a little light shining to make a difference. When we come to this text this morning, in Ephesians chapter 5, it is this same Paul. Last week I preached from Philippians chapter 3. This week I preached from Ephesians chapter 5. It is this same apostle named Paul who continues to talk about the subject of light. Because Paul is an apostle who recognizes that the church 
was not planted in a tulip patch among the roses where all would be easy and everything would be smooth sailing, Paul is acutely aware of the fact that the church is planted in hell's headquarters. Satan is doing everything he can and will continue to do everything he can to provoke and promote darkness in the earth. It's how he works. It's how he survives. It's how people continue to lose their life. It's all about darkness, the lack of illumination. And Paul says here to the church at Ephesus, he gives this entire diatribe in Ephesians chapter five about sexual purity and living holy lives in the midst of a corrupt world. Now, lest you get nervous on a Sunday morning that I'm going to preach about our purity as it regards sexuality, I will tell you in advance that in 2021, the Spirit of God has been dealing with me about talking and teaching about sexual purity because there's as much sexual impurity in the church as there is in many times in the world. And we just need to get some things fixed and under the blood so that we can come out from among the world and be a separate people. When Jesus saved you, it wasn't to give you coping strategies. It was to give you the ability to conquer what used to have you as a slave. And this is the year for freedom. And I've come to announce and tell some people that have been under the vice of sexual bondage, the Lord is going to set you free and your whole house is going to know the power of what it is to walk in the purity of God. But, God. but Paul goes beyond the whole issue of sexual purity and he begins to talk about not only are there things regarding sexual impurity that, that are in the world trying to impose themselves on the church, he goes beyond the conversation of sexual purity and he begins to talk about people who operate in evil need a certain kind of atmosphere to operate in. Demonic spirits. Oh Lord, he believes in demons. That's the reason some people are in such bondage is because they think that little Susie and Johnny are as crazy as they are simply because they, they got some bad pizza last night. No, there are people in this world that are vexed by demonic spirits and many of them are sitting in pews on churches on Sunday and I declare that Jesus did not come to help us slide by. He came to break us free from every work of darkness and this thing that is, that is trying to push in on our nation to create an atmosphere whereby people can operate in darkness that's not going to happen. There will be no hostile takeover of the spirit of this age. It will rise, but there will also be a bride. Lord, I feel like preaching. The answer for the spirit of darkness is not activism. It is a bride that is full of the power of God, that is full of the love of Jesus. And I just want to make an announcement on the first Sunday of 2021. The bride is coming out of the back seat with the word. World, and there will be no more a fellowship with darkness. We are not people of the dark. We are people of the light. I sense in Ephesians 5 as I read this, a tone of urgency in Paul's voice. If you read this in the Greek, I don't want to like, you know, go too deep here, but this is important. If you read this in the Greek, it is in the present, right now, do it now tense of the verb. It's not like you have time. Continually in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, he's telling the church, do it now. It reminds me of reading the Gospel of St. Mark. One theologian called the Gospel of St. Mark the gospel of immediacy. If you ever go read the gospel of St. Mark, look for two, two phrases in the gospel of St. Mark in your English Bible. It says straightway or immediately. 40 times in that gospel, Jesus moved immediately. He immediately went to the river Jordan. He 
immediately came up out of the river. He immediately went to the synagogue. He immediately went to Jairus' house. He, are you listening to what I'm telling you? And what Jesus is trying to show us in the gospel of St. Mark through this immediacy is that a servant doesn't have the privilege of chilling out and obeying when it is convenient. We come over here for a minute. Servants don't obey when it's convenient. Servants don't get all the details before they say yes. I preached this on New Year's Eve night. Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham did not say when God called him, hey, what what, what are you going to do for me? Abraham said, here am I. In the Hebrew, it was hinai. It's the same word that Isaiah gave to God when God looked in Isaiah six in the earth and said who shall go for us who can we send Isaiah said here I am he not me send me wherever you want me to go whatever you want me to do we're living in an urgent hour and servants don't have the luxury of waiting until a convenient time to say yes to the Lord today is the day for yes This is why Paul would say, redeem the time, for the days are evil. Can I just inform you, if you don't already know this, things aren't magically getting better. They don't magically, accidentally get better. They get better, and things change, and days are transformed. Not because the darkness decides to leave, but because people of the light decide It's time to shine. Can I give you a revelation? I've told you this for three straight Sundays. I hope you're getting it by now. Darkness will try to stay and be here as long as time is. There is only one place in this book where darkness cannot be found. It is Revelation chapter 22 verse 5 where it said, And there was no more night. Until we get to that place, there will always be a contention and a wrestling match between a kingdom called darkness and a kingdom called light. And our role is not to show up to tell everybody how bad the darkness is and to glorify the darkness. We are not people of the dark. We are people who simply turn the light on and when you shine, it provides a contrast between the kingdom that you belong to and the kingdom of this world there is something different about you and your savior than can be found in this world and Paul tells us Paul tells us that we've got to redeem the time and that the hour is urgent and he says this he does not say in verse 8 that you used to be in darkness He said you were darkness. You were dark. Okay, so I don't want to offend you, so let me just tell you like my story. I was not just in darkness. I contributed. It would blow your mind at how many people sitting on your row contributed to darkness. I'm not trying to freak you out and make you grab your things and go sit beside someone that looks more sanctified. The reality of it is everyone in this room at some point in their journey contributed to darkness. How in the world did I contribute to darkness? If you were a drunk and shared, (laughs) if you were an alcoholic, if you were a drug addict, if you were addicted to porn and you shared it with people, you were darkness. If you, didn't, if you didn't bring people hope and bring people light, you were darkness. If you brought a spirit up to set, you were darkness. But here's what the good news is. In one split second at the foot of the cross, people who used to be darkness got translated according to, I feel like preaching right here, got translated 
from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son and in one split second one trip to the altar you became a citizen of the kingdom of God and Paul said not only were you darkness but now you are light you don't just stand in the light you are light there is something about him who shines through you that makes the devil nervous I feel like preaching that's why the Bible said we have this treasure in earthen vessels I don't run to church to get it I go to church because I got it and the power of God is at work on the inside of us today He says, oh, I'm excited, calm down here. He says, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Oh, if I had time, there's so much here we could talk about the walk, because it matters how you walk. Not to the modern church, but to the saints I was raised with, it mattered to them how we walked. You didn't get to preach in my church if the preacher didn't know you had spent at least two or three hours in prayer, praying for the sermon. Uh -huh. He wanted to know what we were preaching to make sure it was theologically sound. Uh -huh. He wanted to make sure that, that, that we had a walk. I don't, I don't want to catch, he didn't want to catch us out in the world doing what the world did and then prancing into the church on Sunday singing I am the seed of Abraham as if somehow our song covered up our sin. I want to tell you right now in this day that we're living and you don't have to like this and I hope you love me but I am, I am committed to in 2021, I am committed to the Lord Jesus to preach the whole counsel of this precious book. I'm not going to serve you some Stover's microwave super cooked dinner. I'm not going to give you a bunch of peanut butter and jelly. I'm not going to serve you fluffy ice cream. I want the word. I want to. I want to know that I've heard the word of the Lord. I want my soul to be struck with conviction when I'm in sin. When I've wandered from the truth. I don't want to live in error. I need to know that I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. You were once darkness, but now you are light. We, we could talk about the walk. <laughs> what else could we talk about here? We could talk about wisdom. Be wise, he says. We could talk about our walk. We could talk about having wisdom because there's some people in the church that have a lot of knowledge. But they don't have a lot of wisdom. Y'all not helping me. Have you ever met somebody that knows all the stuff that don't matter but can't put their hands on what really does matter? Knowledge puffs up. I'm gonna make some people nervous now and I'm thankful for all the seasoned men and women that surround my life in this house and outside this house in my own personal, and Devin and I in our own personal journey that speak counsel and wisdom into us. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I have seen recently some teenagers display more wisdom than so-called seasoned people. Because seasoned people, if you're not careful, we will, we will think that knowledge is what gives us the authority and gives us the qualification to be heard. I would much rather hear someone with little knowledge but much wisdom as opposed to little wisdom but much knowledge. Because people who know stuff, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And I have met some people this year with PhDs in front of their names that are fools in the kingdom of God because they don't believe that God is real. And I came to this pulpit today to remind everybody that Jehovah God is real and all wisdom and knowledge begins with that fact. We could talk about wisdom. We could talk about what you drink. Don't meddle, Wallace. Some of you keep getting all the bud you want, but you don't get any wiser. Uh, uh, 
Yep, you can drink all the bud you want, but you won't get any wiser. But I'm telling you, there is a fountain that I've tapped into. There is a river that is flowing. There is a wine that is dropping down from the mountain of God. Be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm, here we go. Help me. Please hear me. I'm not going into a sermon on this this morning, but you need to hear me. Nothing good, nothing good happens when alcohol's involved. If you want to get an escape, (laughs) I found one. It's called a secret place. And if you'll find you a secret place with a playlist, you can escape the mess, the pressure, the stress. You can, you can escape the worry. You can escape. I'm not getting no help. And I know there's some people that are going to write me an email and you ain't going to come back now. I want to tell you that it's a cheap counterfeit for what the Holy Ghost will give you. If you ever get a taste of the Holy Ghost, it'll make you thank God that you never, never found yourself on the side of a road drunk and out of your mind. Somebody help me preach. I understand the need for an escape, but I refuse to find it in something the world calls a spirit. Right, right, right. Come, come over and get a spirit. The first time I saw that at a bar, I told my mama, What's a spirit? She said, Get away from that. Get away from that. I'm telling you what, I, I found a spirit. I said, I found the spirit. It's not in a bottle. You can't, sip, you can't sip it while you're standing at a cocktail table and sitting on a high bar stool. I found me a spirit and it came down from God out of heaven. Jesus said this spirit, where are you LeBron? Jesus said this spirit that is with you shall be in you. If he's in anybody in this room, take 10 seconds and praise God for the Holy Ghost. Well, this is just, y'all are just a unique brand of Christianity. There are no brands of Christianity. And any brand of Christianity that doesn't talk about the Holy Ghost is not a full gospel church. If you're full of God, it's the fullness of the Holy Ghost that'll make you walk right, talk right, live. God, give me the Holy Ghost. Do not be drunk with wine, wherein it is excess, but be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Now you know there's a problem creeping into the body of Christ at large when we have more of a problem when people get enslaved in the Spirit than we do with people having drunk Bible studies. I'm meddling and it feels right. I don't know about all this falling out in the Lord. I don't know about these people shaking and speaking in tongues and... But we line people up to give them vodka at Bible studies and we call that freedom. I call it deception. I need a revival in 2021 that makes me wanna run as far away from this world as I can get and still keep my feet on this planet. I don't, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to run in vain. I don't want you to run in vain and one day wake up and wonder how in the world did I get here? I dealt with more garbage in 2020. Helping, helping young men of God and some older men of God and God help me as I say this, not to sound like I have any kind of, I told you so because I wept. Why is he talking about this? Because there's a spirit of deception. And people start down a trail, they call it liberty and one day it becomes bondage. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. And then Paul comes to this verse right here. I could talk about the walk, the worship, the what you drink, the wisdom I could talk about. And then he goes into wives. Oh, God. Wives. 
All of these W's right here. Wives, submit to your husbands. How many men could say amen? <laughs> but we won't talk about that this morning. There's this scripture right in the middle that's for us. We're in a dark world, Paul says, and there's only one thing that exposes the darkness. That is the illuminating light of God. And this is what he says, you are light. And if those who are called to be light are not shining, then several things must happen. Number one, the sleepers must awaken. This is where we get the word awakening. I was recently chastising, ridiculed, and rebuked because someone said awakening is not in the Bible. You just didn't look in the right place. Paul said, awaken those who sleep. Oh, he here in this text, when he says awaken those who are asleep, he's saying to them, you have a purpose to shine in this dark world and to be an illuminary, a star in the sky. You are called to be light in darkness and yet you have a problem. You are asleep and there is a spirit of slumber and you are missing the opportunity to manifest your purpose. Oh, if I had time, I would take you to Luke chapter 9. You say, oh, Brother Wallace, I'm not asleep, I'm here. So were the disciples on the mountain of transfiguration. But the Bible says, don't miss it, Luke chapter 9, 24, their eyes got heavy. And when their eyes got heavy, they went to sleep. And while they're sleeping, the glory, oh, I felt that, God, thank you. The glory of God descended on the mountain of transfiguration. And Jesus started glowing in the dark. And the Bible said that Elijah came and Moses showed up. And everybody is standing there when the manifest son of God is glowing in the dark. And the disciples, where are they? They are intended to be engaging a moment of glory. But because a spirit of slumber has come upon their eyes they could not stay awake when the glory of the Lord was manifesting and I found out you can come to church and miss the glory you can sit on a pew y'all not saying nothing here and you can miss the glory of God uh -huh. you've got to be more than alive uh, awake uh, in the natural you've got to be awake in the spirit and I know that there's some sleeping going on in the church because this mess that is happening in our nation and around this world this theological, this theological thing that we're in where it doesn't matter what we teach and we don't have scripture for what we say and we sing songs that don't line up with the Bible and everybody's floating around like we're all in some euphoric place and nothing matters. I need truth in my life. I need truth in my song. I need truth in my preaching and we need to wake up and not miss the glory of God. We got people sleeping. Oh, yes. And here, here, here. Oh, I could just go on with this. Yes, Lord. Matthew chapter 25. Jesus says, will you come pray with me? Just give me an hour. Just give me an hour. You give a football game three hours. Give, give me an hour. You're not going to help me. You, 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 you give that other stuff a few hours. Just, Peter, will you give me an hour? Can I, can I find you for one hour out of your day? Just an hour? Yeah, 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 we'll go with you, Lord. And they walk with him. And this thing happens again. Same verse, same word. A spirit of slumber, heaviness, came on their eyes. And they went to sleep while the master was praying. I can understand if you go to sleep on me praying. But how do you fall asleep when Jesus is praying? Which tells me if you're going to sleep when Jesus is praying, you'll sleep on anybody. I want to ask you a question. I want you not to reveal your guilt by any physical manifestation. When is the last time you spent one hour with God in prayer? 
Pastor, you're condemning me this morning. I'm feeling awful beat up. I'm going to help you in a minute, but I'm going to expose it right quick. How in the world do we have an hour for everybody but God? Well, I don't know how to pray an hour. We're going to learn how to pray an hour this year. We're going to learn that prayer is not some boring thing that religious people taught you how to do in a language you don't even speak in. A dialect. Father God, thou who created heaven. Let me tell you, if I had to pray like that for an hour, I would space out and I would start making fun of my own self. You hear what I'm telling you? Prayer is not about finding a dialect that is not natural to you because the Bible said that Pharisees, when they pray, they pray so that they can be heard by what they say and the way they say it. I'm telling you that God knows what you need before you open your mouth, so don't waste his time and don't waste yours. When you get into the place of prayer, holler, scream, roll, whisper, cry, beg, plead, pray, do whatever you gotta do, but stay there until you feel the heavens break open and the peace of God come rushing into your soul. We've been leaving prayer too quickly. We've been leaving the place of prayer too quickly. Well, I couldn't find God. Stay there five more minutes and watch what happens. Oh, I felt that thing. How many have ever felt like, you know, this ain't getting nowhere. But I'm going to push through right here and all that one little decision to push through and all of a sudden something got on you that came from another world. Y'all don't know, do anybody know what I'm talking about? I just need like five people to make sure I don't feel like I'm crazy. Have you ever felt like, you know what, I really don't know if I can pray anymore. This ain't working out like I thought it was going to work out. I, I, I feel like I might be wasting my time and all of a sudden something says just five more minutes. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. Slap your neighbor, tell them, wake up. Oh, if I had time, and I got to hurry. But if I had time, I would tell you about this word awaken in the Greek. Mm, it possesses two very powerful truths. One is given to us through the active voice. One is given to us through the passive voice. And this verb in the Greek can be both active and passive. And when it is active, it looks like this. Rick, wake up! But in the passive voice, it looks like this. Rick shakes himself and wakes himself up. Y'all missing what I'm saying. That means that, that we have a twofold responsibility. Number one, I am called and you are called to tell people who are asleep, wake up. And not only am I called to tell you to wake up, you are called to shake yourself so that if nobody tells you to wake up, you don't sleep through the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the history of humanity. Second thing he says is not only awake, awake, but arise. Awake is for sleeping church people. Arise is for lost sinners. Both, you better hear me, both are called to shine. Sleeping church people are called to shine. If you don't do nothing else for 2021, make this your New Year's resolution. I will not hit the snooze button in the spirit. How many know what a snooze button is? Don't lie, you will go straight to hell. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, making sure some of y'all are listening, right? Snooze. How many got a snooze button and every now and then you get so tired, you just reach over there. Wham! Shut up. Tired of listening to it. Sometimes Devin thinks I have a snooze button. Kevin, you're snoring. And me, what do I do? And you know what she does? And there is something about that tap. Get up. What? What? You are snoring. But I am not a snooze button, Devin. Don't hit me like that again. Wives, submit yourself to your husband snoring. Come on in here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen. If you make any New Year's resolution for 2021 at all, listen to me carefully. 
Don't hit the snooze button. You will miss something if you miss the, if you hit the snooze button. This is not the year, and I am not saying this from a political posture. I am saying this from a kingdom perspective. This is not the, this is not the year to let the news cycle control your fear and keep you out of the presence of God. It is time to be with the people of God. I don't care how you got to do it or what you got to do to feel safe. Do whatever you got to do to feel safe, but be among the people of God. Well, I, don't ha- I have been hearing this nonsense for about a month. I don't have to go to church. I am the church. Read your Bible. I'm the church. The church is never referred to in a singular tone. It is always referred to when the people of God gather. Why do you think the enemy wanted to keep us from gathering? Do you, not, do you seriously believe this was just about a physical agenda? This is a spirit. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. There is a spiritual agenda. What is the spiritual agenda? Keeping the ecclesia separated. Because when we come, oh, I felt that thing. When we come together, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst. No wonder the devil don't want me and you to get together. The last time two prisoners got together, God shook a place and turned a jail cell into a revival center. I feel like hollering. Slap your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, we're going into revival. We're coming out of this sleep. We're coming out of this slumber. We're coming out of this into awakening. All right, shine. Get up from the dead. Listen, somebody in here today is lost. I don't care how lost you are. I don't, I'll crawl up on this TV. I don't care how, don't tell me what to do, Chris. I feel like climbing up as high as I can and telling everybody that I hear my voice. I, I don't care how messed up you are. I don't care how drug addicted you are. I don't care how rebellious you are. You might like your cussing and you might like your alcohol and you might like your darkness, but I know a man that loves you and will rescue you and raise you up out of a pit and give you abundant life. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Oh, no. I got to quit. But this is the year when the saint wakes up and the sinner comes to life. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. I was standing somewhere right over here on New Year's Eve service and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, Kevin, tell the people that the greatest harvest in the first part of this year will come from people sitting in churches who thought they were saved. I ain't being mean. I'm burdened. We have attracted a lot of people to the church, but we have not won them to the kingdom. Come look at our bells and whistles and lights and our smoke. Where's Jesus, y'all? When is the last time sinners repented? Right, right. See, you start preaching on this and people are like, get your stuff, G- Gene, we gotta get down to the buffet, hurry. He gonna start all that again, I can't have no more of this. That's why we're not converted. Because we taught people, come join our church, but didn't teach them that in order to be a citizen of this kingdom, you got to be born again. Right. And we got people singing with microphones and preaching the gospel that are unconverted. And this is the year that in the goodness and the love of God, he refuses to allow people in darkness to stay there. Light is going to shine. I felt that. Light is going to shine and illuminate what's going on in the church. And the good news is he's a loving God. Help me, Brian, I'm through. This is a year where light is going to manifest to us and through us. Let 
There's a word that Paul uses, this old-fashioned word. You don't hear very many people talk about this word, but he says, walk circumspectly. I started looking at that word, Pastor Kim. I said, what does that word mean, circumspectly? It means every area diligently concerned about and looked over to make sure that it is thoroughly right. Much of what we have to counsel out today in churches is a result of Jesus not being Lord of all in our lives. I just want to see him in 2021. I want him. I want to wake up. I don't want to be asleep. I want sinners to arise from their death and come into the life of Jesus. And I want the light of Jesus to shine. I want to be people of the light. When they come to our church, I want them to know what love feels like. I want them to know what kingdom family looks like. All that stuff they get out there, I want there to be the kind of spirit in here when they walk through the door. It just melts off of them and they walk in and experience peace that passes understanding. I want it to be a culture of love and healing and grace, forgiveness and hope. We're going to tell the truth because the truth makes people free. But as hard as we preach the truth, we're going to do it with tears in our eyes because we know that it's love that changes us. So I want to say this to you. I'm, I'm done. You can stand with me. If you're in this room today and you're away from God, and I don't care if it means you knew him and now you don't, or if you've never known him before, you've never known Jesus or if you've known him and walked away and you say Pastor Kevin I need to wake up or Pastor Kevin I need to come to life I remember that movie The Great Showman The Greatest Showman when the world is out of sand and you know it is out to me you could dream and I don't know none of the words but it feels right come alive yeah, that's it. That's what I look. Thank you, Lord. That's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> y'all know y'all sing songs like that too. You know three words, but you got it. It's like dreaming. Okay, somebody needs to come alive today. 